Carsholton. Just another insignificant village in the suburban expanse of South London, right? Uh, no, actually. Settlements in Carshalton have been dated back to the Late Bronze Age more than 4,000 years ago, with continuous settlement up until the time of the Romans. It wasn't until 1086 that the name Olten appears on the official records. The original Olten is taken to mean the farm by the spring. The later Kurs or Kress edition is linked to either cross, possibly referring to a crossroads, or perhaps more likely relates to watercress, which grew abundantly in the district. Following the Norman invasion of Britain in 1066 by that bloke with a really English sounding name even though he was French, well not actually French, he was, anyway it doesn't matter. The first landowner in the area was Geoffrey de Mandeville but he was a bit of a wrong one by all accounts, not that it matters anyway because he didn't live here but gifted the manor of Carshall to his daughter who shacked up with the son of another posh bloke from across the channel called the Count of Boulogne. The Boulogne's remained tenants of the manor for many years and likely lent their name to commemorate the well next to All Saints Church known locally as Anne Boleyn's Well. There is a curious legend that arose centuries later that suggested the well was discovered by a horse being ridden at the time by Anne Boleyn on her way from Nonsuch Palace to Carew Manor. But the details of this story don't hold up to scrutiny because one, Anne was beheaded before Nonsuch Palace was even built and two, a horse discovered a well? Really? Hmm. Ownership of Carshalton changed hands several times between the 11th and 16th centuries by a number of landowners, who were mostly earls and counts, until it fell into the hands of Sir William Scarwin in 1696, who wanted to build a new manor house somewhere on the edge of Carshalton Park. Work was begun by an Italian architect called Giacomo Leone, who obviously lost his mojo and didn't end up finishing the project. The original gates to the park were eventually shipped to America. Heh, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Carshalton Park House was situated somewhere between the high street and the park, but was pulled down in 1927, but nobody knows why. Carshalton Park is now only a fraction of its original size, but is home to the Grotto, which was built in about 1724 as a water feature. A large reservoir, known as the Hog Pit, was recorded in the 1770s to supply water to local mills. These days, it plays host to the annual fireworks in November to commemorate the time Guy Fawkes tried to blow up Parliament but forgot his matches. The confusingly named Carshalton House also holds significant historical value and dates from the early 1700s. Similar to other major properties in the area, this too changed hands several times and was even a military academy for young gentlemen until it was purchased by the Daughters of the Cross in 1893 and eventually rebranded itself as St Philomena's School for Females. Following the explosion of the Industrial Revolution, Carshalton's stretches of the River Wandel became heavily industrialised by the way of water mills that sprung up along its banks. These mills produced all kinds of stuff like paper, parchment, leather, snuff, seed oil, flour, iron, chemicals and probably loads more. The arrival of the railway in 1868 brought wholesale changes to the area and the population grew rapidly. From 1894 to 1965, Carshalton was administered by the Carshalton Urban District, before being absorbed into the London Borough of Sutton as it is today. Carshalton was once famed for its lavender fields that stretched from the edges of Mitcham all the way to Banstead, but the increasing urbanisation put an end to this once flourishing agriculture. Likewise, the mills and factories that populated the banks of the River Wandle also became obsolete, but some of these industrial powerhouses managed to continue grinding out stuff to sell until as late as the 1970s before they were torn down, houses built in their place, and people put inside the houses. There's loads more cool stuff in Carshalton, like the Orangery, Carshalton Water Tower, Little Holland House, All Saints Church, Strawberry Lodge, the Oaks, the Woodman, the Hope, and the Hollywood Museum, but there just isn't time to go through it all. The significance of Carshalton can't and shouldn't be overlooked. While it may feel like the long tentacles of the London urban sprawl have gobbled up this historic village and regurgitated it into just another mundane continuation of the capital's concrete, the fact remains that Carshalton's rich and vibrant history offers this place a unique identity, something local residents should really be proud of. I know I am. <laughs>